Hello everybody, it is I Big Out once again. Merry Christmas and all that. Hope you had a very happy holiday, very Merry Christmas, whatever you celebrate. Um, mine was pretty good. Uh, I uh, Christmas uh, Christmas Eve uh, Sunday went to a beautiful Italian restaurant with my family. Had something called uh, Tortellini Diablo. It was it was uh, this tortellini with a chipotle sauce covered in blackened chicken. And I had a paper plane cocktail for the first time. Actually, quite good. It reminded me a little bit of a Manhattan because of the bitterness of it. And then Christmas Day, we went over to my aunt's house. We had a primary dinner. We had way too much fucking food. Um, but uh, we had a wonderful primary dinner. And I want to show you what I got for Christmas. So the first thing I want to show you, well, I can't show you right now because it's put away. But my dad got me... The, it was called the Lodge Cook-All. Uh, the Lodge Do-It-All, Cook-It-All, whatever the hell it is. It's a cast iron, like, five-in-one cooking device that you put on a, you put on a campfire. You use a pizza oven, it's a wok, what have you. And it's just really nice. But I will show you what I got for Christmas uh, this year. So the first thing is from one of my employees. Or one of my, one of my fellow employees. So this is a completely 100% custom water bottle. Uh, his daughter uh, makes these by commission. So this is a 100% original design for a Ghostbusters watering, uh, uh, wa wa yeah, water bottle. And I'm going to bring it everywhere I go with my uh, suit. It will be on my utility belt now. And another one of my employees for Secret Santa got me this. Egon Spengler. Pop uh, uh a pop figurine of Egon. And it's it's cool because I already have uh Phoebe over there with uh, Lucky and uh Muncher. So it'll fit right in. Next, I got this for my mom. And what this is, it's it's a it's a lamp that has I don't have it completely put together, but it's a lamp with the Ghostbuster logo on it. Got to peel back the protective film. And what's funny is this is <laughs> she accidentally she ordered me two because first one she ordered said it wasn't gonna get here by Christmas, so she ordered another one and they arrived both at the same time. Don't you hate what that happens? So I have two of these fucking lamps, but I'll find a use for them somewhere. So. And then, I also got, oh, it's right over here. I forgot I put it here. Super Mario RPG, the remake. Funny thing is, I never was a big, like, J. Uh, I wasn't, really was, I never really was an RPG guy. But that was, one of the, that's one of the few RPGs that I grew up with that I legitimately enjoyed. And then... Nothing too exciting for the rest of what I got. I got some clothes, some track, some Adidas track pants, some flannel pajama bottoms, pajama bottoms with camping tent. Uh, got some new Mario t-shirts. Oh snap! So there's the Piranha Plant one. Here is Super Mario. And then finally, a brand new comforter for my bed. A nice red fleece comforter because the one that I have right now has seen better days. So, if you want, you tell me what you got for Christmas. And, uh, yeah. Uh, th but that that's not the end of the video. Uh, I want to talk about... Uh, th this, is, uh, this is apparently the year of the YouTube apology because... Good lord. <laughs> there, there's a there's a YouTuber apology every fucking... It seemed like there was a new YouTube apology every month. You know, it, and I think it, it... I think it all started with, uh... With this, this person right here. Um... Uh, this person right here, you know, is <laughs> the Illuminati. Blair. And, uh, just... Just... To be fair... I bought this before the shitstorm happened. So now I'm just kind of stuck with this cursed plushie. <laughs> so, it'll, it'll, 
just sit on the corner as an infernal, as an eternal reminder of uh, not to look up to your heroes or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, that shitstorm's still happening. Like every person that used to be part of her circle of friends is now get. She's now like threatening lawsuits with. So whatever. And then we had uh, Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings, who I never even fucking heard of until the apology happened. But, uh, you know, people came forward with receipts. Hey, you know, I was young and she did this. To, I was a kid and she did this to me. Hey, you know, I was uh, I was part of the audience and she did this to me. Yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, the infamous ukulele. <laughs> I think every YouTuber apology needs to have a fucking ukulele or an instrument of some kind now. Because nothing can top that. <laughs> it's just... You know what? Fuck it. You know, if... God forbid, I would ever do something heinous. <laughs> if I were to do something heinous, my YouTuber apology would be with Automaton. Can I go higher? No, I can't. <laughs> Let me see if I can... There we go. Yeah, that's going to be my instrument of choice if I ever do a YouTube apology for whatever reason. But no... I think the worst part about that is that she came up with another apology after that and talked about how much the first one sucked and how embarrassed she was of even putting it out there to begin with. And yet, it's still up. It's still getting monetized. She even put it on fucking Spotify so that not only can she earn money off of it, but she can DMCA people who use it in their videos. And she has kids. Like, but... <sighs> I think the thing that pisses me off the most about that apology, the the the, the co toxic gossip train, is where she downplay. You know, oh, I'm getting canceled for a fart joke, but you see the context of that fart joke, and she has a young girl wearing a romper. She makes her lay on her back, put her legs in the air, and forces her legs open so that you can see down the romper and see everything. So yeah, that's pretty fucked up. And th this is kind of a it's kind of a trend that I notice with YouTuber apologies. They never specify exactly what they're in trouble for or what what they're getting accused of. It's just vague shit, like super vague. Like Colleen never s explicitly said what she was getting in trouble for, right? She never like pinpointed it was like, "Oh yeah, you know, I I'm being accused of sexualizing and grooming minors you know and the, and these are the specific incidences that people talk about no she's very vague about it and and it, and it works because apparently nothing fucking happened to her you know she sh <laughs> there's receipts up the ass about what she did but uh nothing bad happened to her right and then we have sniper wolf who fucking went to uh Went to Jack's went to Jack's film's house, filmed it, put it on put it on uh, the internet, and said, "Hey, here's where that asshole lives. Have at it." So now he and his family are are fearful for their lives, and people have been arguing about whether or not what she did was illegal or not. I know Vito got fucking put on blast for basically saying that she did she didn't do anything illegal, and everything everybody's blowing out out of proportion. But, uh, I, I'm not a legal expert in any, by any means. I'm just a guy on YouTube. But no, but no, nothing happened to her. Like she got a slap on the wrist and YouTube only said they were going to do something because people refused to shut up about it. So she got per temporarily demonetized, which I got, I don't even know if that was, <sighs> nothing happened to her. Right, she's still making videos, and apparently she even stole someone someone else's life. <laughs> like, not only is she stealing people's content, she stole another person's identity to to get to where she is today. What's another 
f fucking YouTuber apology. Uh, James Sun Summerton, Summerton, I think his name is. Uh, I never fucking heard of him until now. That, that seems to be like the the trend that I'm seeing. A lot of these, like pretty much all of these YouTubers, I've never fucking heard of until they fucked up. Other than maybe the completionists who I've seen passing videos on. But like James Summerton uh, is an asshole for plagiarizing his entire career. And, okay, so here's... Here, I want to bring this up. So, I forgot this person's name. They're a trans woman. Uh, they were they, they were in a fucking Twitter spat because there was a trans woman who was brutally murdered in the UK and people were trying to use hashtag say her name to, to be connected with this girl this trans girl and black twitter got pissed off said no you can't use that that's our thing fuck you whitey <laughs> fuck you you're being if you use this for a trans woman for a white trans woman you're racist and this fucking person this trans woman who whose name escapes me is like you know what guys they're right i you know they're, they're right you know you know who <laughs> what the fuck man but anyway she made a video about james summerton and there was a comment on that video that was like is he actually, at this point, is he actually gay or is he plagiarizing that too? Which I thought was fucking hilarious. But apparently 50 comments, of the 50 or so people beneath that comment didn't think so. Thought that uh, he, this, this fucking rando making some kind of joke about him faking his entire, not only his career, but his sexuality. Apparently that's harming the community. Not the asshole who... Actually, who who spent his entire career stealing from said community? No, the rando online making a making a throwaway joke. That's what that's what's harming the community. You fuckers really need to pick your battles <laughs> more wisely. It's kind of like with Chris Chan when uh, he did with what he did, uh, and uh, any time people try to talk about it. The, the conversation goes to a fucking screeching halt because there's always that there's always some asshole who has to say um actually Chris Chan's pronouns are she her and well well Chris Chan also believes they are a dimension hopping deity from outer space so uh have fun with that <laughs> what the fuck but no it's like pick your battles right so yeah, fuck Jane Silverton. Uh, and then there's the completionist, right? Gerard the completionist, which, God, good fucking God, guys. Who boy. So you can argue the legality of what, what uh, Sniper Wolf did, you know, showing up at someone's house, taking a picture and posting that on the internet. You can argue about that until the cows come home. People seem to be at an impasse, a split 50-50 about whether or not it was illegal. I don't think there's any argument about what Gerard did, <laughs> whether what he did was illegal or not, because that's very clearly fucking charity fraud. Were you, you know, and people getting on uh, Muda and Carl's nuts about, you know, oh, well, they're not legal experts, they can't talk about this. I don't think you need to be a fucking legal expert. When somebody... When somebody says, hey, donate all your money to me, and I will donate that money to uh, to another charity, and that money hasn't moved for 10 years, not, not a single charity has seen a single dime of that money for 10 years, I don't think you need to be an expert in law to be, to be like, hey, I think that's kind of, I think that's kind of illegal. I think you are actually breaking the law when you do that. Because that sounds like, that sounds like textbook charity fraud. I don't think you need to be a legal expert to point that out. It's like, I don't think you need to be a chef to point out when someone's uh, cooking his dog shit. I don't think you need to be a writer, a director, a producer to say that a movie sucks or a cartoon sucks or whatever. Like, when some, when you have someone, some fuck, some fucked hard, like, like the completionists say, you know, oh, well, yeah, we know the money hasn't gone anywhere for 10 years but that's because you know we, we were we were trying to look for a place to put it for 10 years and he and then he 
he didn't waste any time down uh, downloading. He didn't waste any time donating it when the fucking torch was under his feet. You know, I, I, I guess it really wasn't that hard to find a place to put the money. You know, but uh, I, I'm not gonna say anything that you haven't already heard before. He's a piece of shit, and good on Muda and uh, good on Carl for pointing that out. But uh, I'm not satisfied. I'm not. You know, when when the when he was like, guys, I donated the money. We're good now. We're we're cool now, right? No, we're not cool. We're not good. You and your scumbag family should be in fucking jail for what you did. You know, not to diminish the hard work that Carl or Muda, you know, did by uh, doing this entire expose to begin with, but uh, somebody needs to go to jail for this shit. I, I am sick and tired of these assholes not getting in trouble for doing what they do. Like Logan Paul, right? I know I bring him up a lot, but he's a textbook example of this, Right? He, he goes to Japan with his entourage, makes a complete fucking jackass of himself by, you know, and by breaking laws and harassing the, the, the locals, films a fucking corpse swinging from a tree, you know, he gets a slap on the wrist for it, he's scamming people with NFTs, nothing happens to him, he's marketing literal poison to children, nothing happens to him. And he's at the high. He, he's in the highest point of his career, you know. <laughs> what the fuck? Then you know, Sniper Wolf. Nothing happens to her. Uh, Colleen Ballinger. Nothing happens to her. Jeffrey Star, who has been caught, you know, trying to hook up with minors. Nothing happens. You know, as far as I know, he's still selling makeup. You don't. No one gives a shit. You know, this is just drama to people you know they, they, they make a big stink about it and then they forget about it and and then go to something else no we need to have a fucking fire under these people's asses forever <laughs> until until something is done it was like gerard you know this should not end with you know the phone call being leaked and, and to just to go off and unlo just like carl and mudahar were so charitable to him. They, they were going easy on him. They were, ironically enough, they were far more charitable to him than he ever was with the money he got do donated. <laughs> that was supposed to go to a charity. But they were, they only released bits and pieces of the, 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 the recording. And, and I gotta say, Making that decision to go on that call is probably the worst decision Gerard has ever made in his life. Like he had he had an option to just not go. He had an option to ignore all of it, but he decided to to go on the call anyway. And they told him, they straight up told him, Hey, we're recording this and we're going to make this public. Is that okay with you? And he and the fucking dipshit said yes. <laughs> Without a lawyer or anything just blows my fucking mind and and credit to the guys again you know even after all the sob even after all the groveling and begging and pleading and and him implying that he'll throw money at them to go away and the sob story oh no you don't understand this is my family this is the story of my family let me bring up my mom's corpse for the 20th time even after all that they're like yeah it's cute uh we're still going forward with this because you fucked up <laughs> so yeah I sincerely hope that something comes of this and it's not just swept under the rug, just like at fucking everything else. But that's really all I got to say about that. Again, excuse me. Again, I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you have an even better new year, which is coming up. And I can't believe 2023 is going to be over in just a matter of days and i shall see you if not this year then the next this has been big al thank you for watching over and out